Recently, I uploaded a video titled What Makes the Doom Marines Return So Interesting, and first and foremost, thank you to everyone for the overwhelming amount of attention it received, but following on from that was a lot of comments about how incorrect I was about what I suppose was common knowledge for a lot of people in the Doom community. So out the gate, I'm sorry for presenting incorrect information to you all. I am just one person who makes these videos out of a passion I have for creative concepts and a love for the Doom series. Unfortunately, not everywhere you look has correct information, and that's the topic of today's video. The name's Fusa, and I'd like to delve deep into arguably the biggest issue in the Doom series, the Doom timeline as a whole, and also address some issues about that Doom Marine video too. Everyone has a different interpretation of the Doom timeline, and everyone has different beliefs as to what is considered canon or non-canon material. The biggest and longest standing issue of this argument is Doom 3. At the time of its release, its clear intention was to be id Software's true interpretation of Doom, and was designed to replace Doom 1 and 2. However, as time went on, id Software went on to do greater things, and its core founders left to live their lives. Eventually, Doom ended up being helmed by Hugo and all of these guys too. And they brought Doom back from this experimental era with Doom 4, or better known as Doom 2016, later following up with Doom Eternal as we all know. With Doom being handled by so many different people, visions change, ideas evolve, and people grow to be more interested in one component than another. This is natural, and should be expected when handing down a franchise to new developers, and isn't something I hold against anybody. However, with Doom Eternal and myself trying to do the impossible, it just shows the flaws of the series narrative as a whole. You cannot streamline the Doom continuity into one universe or one timeline. At Doom's core, everyone knows its gameplay first, story dead last. If you've played the original Doom games, you'd know this full well. The series was never meant to be taken seriously, so when you try and make sense of all that goes on in Doom, you run into many issues as I have discovered firsthand. There exists a multiverse in Doom, where anything and everything is possible, yet nothing is canon but is equally as important as what is canon. Does that make sense? No, probably not, and that's the issue with the Doom timeline. John Carmack, one of the founding fathers of Doom, is often quoted as having said that a story in a game is like a story in a movie. It's expected to be there, but it's not that important. A quote which originated from the book Masters of Doom. This quote perfectly describes and explains why Doom is impossible to comprehend as one coherent experience. It explains why when John Romero states one fact about the series, Hugo Martin can contradict that with another fact, yet they're both considered canon. Unfortunately, most information about the vaster Doom lore is locked behind interviews and live streams where one prominent figure in Doom Eternal's development said or mentioned something rather than it being in a game for everyone to see. This has led to a ton of inconsistencies between people's understanding of the story of these games, a story that increasingly becomes more important to need to know about as the games progress. Doom was never about the story, yet Doom 3, 4, and Doom Eternal all make it about story. Therein lays the issue with the series. So the solution is a multiverse, one where anything can be considered canon, even if it directly contradicts established rules or events. If Doom isn't supposed to be coherent and understood as one thematic experience, then why did I bother to simplify the timeline in the Doom Marine returning video? Well, to put it simply, it's a concept. It's make-believe. As a child, I would spend a lot of time in my backyard playing with sticks, thinking up universes filled with characters and story arcs, and I'd relive the best moments of those stories in my head each time I went into that backyard. It's what children do, but that creative side of me never went away. Instead, it grew up alongside me and manifested into Fusa. I make these videos to shed a new light on things that you may have never considered and show the fun side of what if content. So to answer the question, I made that video so people could more easily understand the what if scenario that the Two Slayers video would later delve deeper into. To give newcomers to both Doom and my channel a grounding 
on this concept before blowing their socks off with everything I have to say in that Two Slayers video because there's a lot of information to take in for a newcomer. It was never supposed to be something that convinced the Doom community that what they know is all false, I just happened to include some inconsistencies from the Doom wikis and old Doom forums as a part of my research. That's my bad, I'll take the L on that one and try to do better next time, I'm sorry. <laughs> Doom isn't supposed to be taken seriously, despite what Doom Eternal's lore wants you to believe. It's never been a primary focus until Doom Eternal, and even within that same game they contradict things. If you think Doom 3 isn't canon, you'd be right. But you'd also be wrong. Same goes for any other Doom game. Is it real? Is it canon? I don't think you're supposed to take it seriously. So don't. Just enjoy the games as they come. Final Fantasy has returning characters and themes in every game, yet their stories are always disconnected. Final Fantasy 3 shares no correlation to Final Fantasy 13, 16, or 7, yet they're their own stories, but share similar characters and themes. This is how I believe Doom is set out. Even if it's not concrete or confirmed by a developer in a livestream four minutes ago on dailymotion.com, it is what makes the most sense to me. And I think that's the important takeaway from this video. Believe what makes the most sense to you, because if Doom isn't supposed to be taken seriously, then you shouldn't stress if somebody's Doom mod from 1996 is canon and important to the overarching narrative. It's just a video game. And a damn fun one at that. So take it easy, touch some grass, live your life. The name's Fusa, and if you made it this far without disliking the video, I appreciate you. Open-mindedness is critical when delving into concepts and themes such as these. I would also like to mention that it is perfectly okay to want to have a timeline in Doom and have your own beliefs about the series and speculate on how things could be. The continuity is left intentionally vague. So why not speculate? Just have fun with it. I make other videos on this channel too. My favorite are the Fuseps, as they're the heart and soul of Fusa. But if you like things more along the lines of critical thinking, FooView may be for you, offering a new light on subjects such as these. Please remember to remain respectful, safe, and most importantly, creative. After all, a story must be told or there'll be no story. Yet. It is the untold stories that are the most moving.